All right, greetings to everyone. Uh, this is a little mini teaching. We do about five to eight minute mini teachings on our YouTube channel, and I thought that you would find this interesting. One of the things I have enjoyed about going to the Holy Land for the past 35 years at least is the antiquities. They excavate areas and cities and they discover antiquities. Now, a lot of these antiquities are uh, given to the Israeli Museum where they have auctions. And one of my dear friends, his name is uh, Shweki, uh, at Jerusalem Gates is one of the large antiquities dealers. Uh, Shweki has informed me that the day may come when uh, there will be a limitation of antiquities which can go out of the country. But over 35 years, one of my hobbies has been to uh, we call it Wheel and Deal with Shweki and others that are in that part of the world and to uh, collect antiquities. I want to show you the story of the 10 virgins. As you know, the Bible teaches that there were 10 virgins waiting for the call of the bridegroom and they became very tired because the bridegroom delayed the call that he was coming and they began to sleep. When they awoke, five of them had extra oil and five did not. The five that had the extra oil put it in their lamps and the lamps were lit and they were able to go into the wedding. The five that did not have the oil were distracted and had to go find oil. And of course, this was an actual parable. It's not that it actually happened, but it's a story with a concealed meaning in it. And so the meaning was to keep your lamp trimmed and burning and keep yourself ready. Now, what did it mean about lamps? If I were to use the word a lamp today, we would think of a lamp on a bedstand that you flip a switch and there is a light bulb. That is not what the lamp is. I will give you two examples of lamps that I have here. Actually, let me pull this one out. Now, these are from totally different time frames. <clears throat> and uh, we have one that is actually from the area of Samaria, the darker looking lamp because of the color of the clay from that area often is from the area of Samaria. That's how you're able to tell it. This is one that goes back. Now, this says the Iron Age period here, but that's just something I put this in. But this goes back to the to the uh, uh, Roman period. And this one also goes back to that particular time frame or can be a little bit earlier. As you see, they're made out of clay. They're molded a different way. And you can tell by the design uh, if you're an expert, which I'm not the expert. I'm just someone that enjoys this type of thing. Uh, you can tell by the design, the age that it was part of. Now, all of these would have been used uh, in homes, for example, because most of them were found uh, in areas of excavations where there had been destruction over the centuries. Let's just take this larger one here where you can sort of see. Now, <clears throat> here's what you would do with an ancient oil lamp. You would take olive oil and you would pour it into the top of the hole. In this one, you would pour it into the base. And in this one, as you see, there is an opening here. Now, this is called the mouth. This is called the mouth. This is called the mouth. You would take a linen wick and you would dip it in oil and you would roll it up and stick it into these, what we call the mouth of the oil lamp. And then you would light this. And when you would light it, it would draw from the oil on the inside into that wick and it would burn. Now, eventually you would run low on oil and the wick would cease to burn with its light. Another thing that would happen is that the wicks eventually would become so old you had to replace the wick because it would produce what we would call in the uh, days when we had coal stoves soot, which is a, sort of a, a black, uh, black dust that forms on the wall or it forms uh, in the area where the lamp would be. We've actually gone into some of the uh, places in Israel, like the Talmudic village that have these lamps burning, and you can see where the wall would become very, very dark. Uh, the, when I say the wall, it would be made of rock and stone, of course. So in the parable, what happened was that the oil, they had burnt their lights, all 10 virgins had, till there was no oil in the lamp. Now the lamps they had back then, these were used in homes. The lamps they had back then for the parable would have been lamps that were big and round like this with oil in it. And it had a place at the bottom where a wooden pole would go and you could hold it up in the air. So it was a little bit different than what we would call the lamps that we use by the common people in their homes back in the Roman period, both before the Roman period, after the Roman period, these oil lamps were used. So the emphasis with Jesus in the parable 
parable is. And you can hear him talk about to keep your lamps trimmed, to keep your lamps burning. That simply means to keep your light, keep oil. The oil represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit and to keep the Holy Spirit activated in your life every day on a consistent basis. The, la- the light, of course, is the light of the gospel. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The Holy Spirit is represented by oil as in the Old Testament. They would put the olive oil on the head of the king or the priest and the anointing of the Holy Spirit would come upon them. So I show you this today because I want you to understand how that these particular objects, a lot of them we have here, uh, have a lot of different uh, connections, not only to biblical history, to the history of the Bible, but they also, uh, when you begin to study certain types of objects, there can be biblical references made to them. If you remember the story of Gideon, it talked about how they had pictures and how they broke the pictures. And this is this would be considered a, a picture. This is a small one, of course. And you would put water in there. You could put oil in there. Sometimes they would put wine and things like this. This was just a very small one, though, that was in a home. There's much, much, much larger ones. Uh, but uh, we want to share that with you. And we hope that uh, these little mini lessons are blessings to you. We're going to be posting, if it's not already posted, it will be, something called Bloopers by Perry Stone. You know, every now and then you need a, just a good laugh. I want you to watch that one because I think uh, you will really enjoy and, uh, and get a laugh out of some of the bloopers that have happened over the years in the ministry. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click the bell, and that way you'll know when we come on. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy this biblical lesson. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel and never miss a video by clicking the bell to get the alerts when a new video is posted. This YouTube channel is made possible by your generous donations. So to support our outreach of teaching, visit perrystone.org slash YT.